Yeah, uh, good time of year. Uh, very exciting for the players to get into the competitive season. They put in a lot of work as far as weight room, training, all of those types of things. It's a challenge for us as coaches for the next 10 days, two weeks, to keep them focused on improving, um, which that'll be a big point of emphasis. We have a lot of work uh, that we still need to do uh, prior to getting to next Friday. But then at that point, you know, we'll probably be where we can't improve anymore until we get to see somebody else in the other dugout, which we're real excited about. Uh, great non-conference schedule uh, with a lot of teams that were in the NCAA tournament or conference championship teams from a year ago uh, that will test us. Um, but there's a lot to feel good about, uh, a lot of returning players with a lot of at-bats uh, that are better than they were a year ago, uh, some guys that were uh, hoping to take that next step in their development and mesh it all together and figure out our best team and, and go out and compete really hard, you know, in, in a way that we want our program to be known for. So we're very excited to uh, get going next week. Remus was um, named with many honors recently. Uh, what does it say about him and what is, how do you think it will impact the team? Yeah, um, first off, um, those types of things whether it's, it's rankings, preseason honors, are all uh, validation of good performance in the past. And Alfonso certainly had a great season last year, probably, in my opinion, one of the most underrated players in the country. Um, in terms of his qualities as a player, he has uh, as good a plate discipline as any college hitter you will see. Uh, his ability to hit mistakes is as good as any hitter that you will see at this level. And the thing I appreciate the most about him is his mental maturity. Uh, he's very consistent, you know, never too high or too low. And that allows him to perform at a high level uh, on a consistent basis. And he's really a model in that regard that we want all of our hitters to get to. What have you learned about your team since spring practice started? Yeah, uh, like I said, we still have some work to do. Um, and it's, it's more tangible, fundamental stuff as opposed to how all the pieces fit. I think there's been some clarity uh, come to light in the last two weeks in terms of that. Um, we've focused on, as we always do, the process of what it takes to win a Division I baseball game. Um, you know, There's been a lot of good things and a lot of things that we need to continue to improve on. But um, the personnel, I think we've learned a lot as far as how some of the pieces are going to roll out uh, originally, which is, is good. And it should be that way when you have some older players in the program that have had some previous experience and successful experience. Um, so there's some good foundational pieces. Um, and I think we've learned a lot about that here in the last couple of weeks. How close are you to figuring out what the pitching staff might look like at least early in the season? Um, I, I think we're getting closer. I think uh, this weekend will be important. Um, you know, we've had a lot of guys have a good outing, you know, or two. I'd like to see this weekend to evaluate um, the consistency and how that gets rolled out. I think at the front of it, you know, we have a few experienced pitchers uh, that have all taken a step forward in their development. And I think uh, Coach Lawn deserves a lot of credit with that. Um, Michael Flynn uh, has pitched very well the last two weeks. Um, and everything is there in terms of velocity, uh, multiple pitches for strikes. Um, you know, And so he'll obviously figure in heavily to what we're doing. Uh, we've talked before uh, about Tyler McGill's improvement in his body conditioning, delivery. Uh, mental maturity. Um, I think he's come a long ways and will definitely be heavy, uh, heavily involved in, in what we do. Uh, Cody Deason, same thing, um, has really progressed well. And I'm very pleased with that. Um, you know, it's three right handers, a couple left handers. Uh, Randy LeBeau uh, had a very good outing last weekend, uh, had a good fall for us in terms of, of throwing strikes. Um, and when he did that last year, he was very effective against some really good teams. So um, again, the consistency piece of that is what we're continuing to look for from him. Avery Weems had a great outing uh, last weekend and has really um, taken some maturity steps since we've been back. Um, you know, and then there's some guys, and I mentioned this before, last year that have also taken some step forwards. Juan Aguilera is probably a guy that I should have used a little bit more last year. And late in the year, 
he helped us out in some key spots. I think you'll see him factor into things. Robbie Medell, uh, who numbers-wise had a very good season, when you stacked all of it up together, uh, we'll figure into it. And then there's some freshman pitchers that, that we really like. Uh, Jonathan Gordado uh, comes to mind in terms of stuff, uh, explosiveness, um, uh, maturity. He is a winner. You know, had a very good high school uh, year last year in terms of wins, losses, numbers. Uh, Gil Luna is a lefty that has a good arm. Um, ball comes out of his hand great. Josh Haley, uh, pitchability guy. And then again, there's a lot of competition, you know, beyond that. Austin Nichols coming off Tommy John surgery. I mean, he's an athletic delivery, a fast arm. Ryan Gallons has improved a lot. Um, I'm hesitant to leave anybody out. Jason Seaver is another left handed pitchability guy that had to sit out last year due to transfer rules. Uh, Preston Price has a good arm. We're just looking for that consistency out of him. Um, really good fastball. So it's still. <laughs> <laughs> a work in progress, and, and jobs are, are up for the taking. A guy like Zach Sherman, who redshirted last year, you know, has you know, been you know, on an 89-91 with good sync on his ball and multiple pitches for strikes. So it's, uh, it's, it's a good battle. You're going to see a lot, of, a lot of guys roll out of the bullpen early on in the season, and, and the goal is to play well enough to where we can have some success in terms of winning some games while figuring out what our best team is. I always believe that to be really important, and uh, this year's no different. What's the depth like on this year's team? As opposed to last year and the year before, how would you say you guys stack up top to bottom versus? Yeah, I think, uh, I think the, strength, the strength is in some of the experience. You know, when you have a catcher like Cesar Salazar, who's, you know, caught in the College World Series, you know, who was an all Pac-12 player, Last year, you have a known quantity there that's an improved known quantity. You know, at that position, uh, Ryan Hogg, in my opinion, is one of the best defensive catchers you could have, and he'll also play in the outfield and and do some things. Um, the infield, uh, Alfonso is going to play first base. Um, I mean, you asked about the hitting thing. He's an excellent defensive first baseman um, that uh, I think is probably going to help us over there, uh, and will be an improved deal for us. The Nick Quintana, um, who had a good freshman season last year um, and has really made some good strides lately, just since we've been back in January, uh, as a hitter, as, uh, you know, he'll play third. Uh, coach Brown, our infield coach, has done a great job with him defensively. And, and he has made some really good steps there. Uh, the middle infield, you know, still sorting itself out a little bit, but, um, Travis Minot has played really well since we've returned. Uh, he had an injury and missed a lot of the fall. Um, but, you know, it's a guy that has, you know, had a full year of starting in the Pac-12 as a freshman, um, now has two years of maturity underneath him. I think he fits in really well with the dynamic of this team, switching shortstop. Um, Cameron Cannon is, is somebody whose ability I'm really high on. Um, you know, and, and now it's a step of taking that ability and can he be a player that helps his team win games. And, um, and with that, Jacob Blass is a, is a really good player that you're going to hear a lot about, a freshman shortstop that, that we like, and he'll have opportunities as well. Um, the outfield, um, Mitchell Morimoto uh, will probably, you know, get the first go and left. Uh, Cal Steven and Stevenson and center. And uh, Matt Frazier in right. We can obviously put Ryan Hogg in the outfield. He started in the, at the back half of the year or the end of the year in left field for us. So I don't think it's, it's wide in number of bodies, but I think in, in quality, it's, it's okay. Um, and, you know, beyond that, I mean, we have two freshman left handed hitters, uh, Tate Soderstrom and Dante Williams, that are athletic, live body, explosive, and probably just need some experience and at-bats under them as well. So feel good about it. Um, the key is they all have to keep getting better. And um, if they improve, then I would say the depth is, is solid. And so we keep going to work on that improvement. It seemed that at times uh, JJ and Alfonso had sort of a mentor-mentee kind of relationship. You see Alfonso now overtaking that role? 
Yeah. Um, you know, mentioning JJ, it, one of the, the most gratifying things, you know, just recently is seeing all those pro guys around here all the time. I mean, it's, they're out there taking BP, taking ground balls, and it's really a culture and a dynamic that we want to create here. You know, it's like they're, they can't play for us, but they're still around here, you know, every day and, and working out in the weight room and really setting a good example for our players for where they want to go. Um, with that being said, I think the leadership on this team is strong, and it's a good year for that because, like I said, you have Alfonso, you know, who's, who's played in the College World Series, who was an all-Pac-12 player, who has the right temperament, the right work ethic. To He can mentor guys just by the example that he sets on a daily basis. And uh, he's not the only one. You know, Cesar, uh, Cal, you know, Robbie Medell. I think we have some guys that our younger players can look to, and that's, that's really important because we'll turn over a lot of our team, you know, after this year. Uh, we brought in a lot of transfers, you know, in the first couple years and have really focused on building our team one year at a time. And so I think uh, the positive in that is you have a lot of guys like Alfonso who have played a lot of games of consequence and had success in those games and do it the right way. And so uh, I think our players have a good template in him and a lot of the older guys to follow. What do you attribute Alfonso's improvement as a batter from his freshman year to his sophomore year? Experience. There's no substitute for uh, playing time. Um, I often use this quote, the, the best coach you'll ever have in your life is playing time and, and experience. And uh, on a, a team that turned out to be very good, he got a lot of it. Um, his health, um, as a freshman, he, he was dealing with a lot of <laughs> – you know, hamstring, lower back, hip. I mean, he played through the postseason in a lot of pain, which, you know, wasn't really exposed. Uh, his, he's stayed healthy. He's gotten stronger. Um, he's more athletic. I mean, really getting down the line, like almost in a plus runner fashion, which hasn't always been the, the case, um, which adds another dimension to his game. I think, uh, you know, having success in the Cape Cod League against some of the best pitching in the country, um, you know, has, has really benefited him as, as well. And um, he's, uh, he, he's, he's, he's a great player, and I'm glad he's at Arizona, at least for one more year. <laughs> TBA, <laughs> which is a big surprise to everybody. Um, you know, he can help us because of the type of competitor and, and ball player that he is. I think the value on the position player side of it, though, is so great in that regard that we have to be smart about how we're going about doing that. He's a great teammate, and if his number is called upon to help our team win, then you'll probably see him on the mound at some point. What role do you see guys like Matt Frazier having this year? I mean, he had a big summer up there in the uh, East of Minnesota. The North, yeah, North Duluth. State. What do you see guys like, how do you see guys like that stacking up this season? Well, that's the key. It's, it's, it's honestly the keys to the season is uh, – Development. You know, we just mentioned experience. We just mentioned playing time. Uh, Matt was in a crowded outfield situation with, you know, two all Pac-12 players and another guy that was really hot for a, a large portion of the season. So it was hard to get him in probably maybe as much as we should have. Um, I think he has a good template for what he needs to do to be a good player for our team. And we're counting on that. And, um, you know, it's, it's one of those weekends or it's one of those years, excuse me, where – you know, mentally, a player like that has to stay engaged for the whole weekend and has to do what our team needs him to do on offense to keep the lineup moving, to play good defense in the outfield. And uh, there's a high demand on his improvement, and he knows it. And um, I think he's excited about that, and I'm excited to see how he responds to that. Um, with Nick Quintana, he had a very good year, obviously, as a freshman. It did tail off a little bit toward the end. What are some of the things that you, uh, the coaching staff, and he've been working on in terms of his hitting to become more consistent? Yeah, uh, I think you said it right there. I mean, when, when a guy starts off like that and is having as much success as he, he does, it's, it's hard to almost have any credibility and go to him and say, hey, we need to make some adjustments. Um, but Nick's a great baseball guy, and he's very coachable. I think if I was to keep it as simple as I can with what we're doing is he's becoming increasingly difficult to pitch to. And, uh, you know, you can take that however you want. Improved plate discipline, improved balance, uh, plate coverage, 
And uh, I'm really pleased with the strides he's been making, even over the course of the last couple weeks. I think, um, you know, at some point it's going to really come together and you're going to see a good player as he was, but transformed to even better player. And uh, that's really exciting. And then you, you um, capture that with his defense. And that's why players should go to college. You know, 99% of high school players should go to college for, you know, I think what you're, you're seeing in, in his development. And uh, he loves baseball. He's coachable. And uh, he makes it uh, easier to do those types of things. And he should be commended for it. And he'll, he'll be a good, good and a better player because of it. What is um, Avery Wynn's role going to be, do you think, for this? Yeah, I, I, uh, I have high hopes for Avery. Um, we have had him committed for a very long time. I've had him, <laughs> I mean, since the fall of our first year here. So it's, it's great that he's finally here. I think his uh, stuff is, is what you want, you know, in a, a, a Division I left-handed pitcher. I'm excited over the past two weeks, he's really made some strides and and taking that stuff, and, and we talk about this all the time, making it usable game skill. And most of it is, is mental game, uh, staying in the moment, um, focusing pitch to pitch, uh, pitching with a high level of confidence, um, and, and developing a process of whatever it is, positive self-talk to get him aggressive. And last weekend's outing was really impressive. Uh, you'll see him in, in a lot of games and important innings, um, probably. And most of our pitchers probably fall into that role, at least initially, of, of swing where they could start and, and also come in at important times during the game. His pitch count is stretched out as such of a starter, and that's very well possible. Um, but it's hard to win games, and we're not going to leave wins on the table with some of our better arms sitting there waiting for tomorrow. It doesn't work. <laughs> and, um, you know, if you look at the past two years, starting the year, arguably our best pitcher has started the year in a bullpen. And that's, that's by design. And I think you'll see some of that uh, with this team. How have you seen Robbie Mandel uh, grow since he transferred to Arizona to now? Yeah, I wasn't here Robbie's first year. Um, and he had some success that year from a, a numbers standpoint. Um, in 16, you know, we ended up really riding five really good pitchers, you know, as, as we did what we did and accomplished what we did. Um, last year, I think uh, he probably about halfway through the season uh, created a new preparation and competitive standard for himself. And by doing that, uh, achieved some success and his role expanded. And I think that will be the case this year. And I'm glad to have him back. Um, he's done a great job from a, a teammate perspective, from a leadership perspective. And on top of doing that, we've made the expectation clear that he also has to continue the preparation, the investment part, to be ready to pitch for us. And um, I'm excited to get him in sit higher leverage situations than maybe he's been in in the past two years. And I think he's more ready, more prepared for it. Well, he's got a great personality, as all of you guys know. Um, it, uh, I think sometimes it's, it's changing from good teammate guy, keep everybody loose guy, to you know, now it's my time to shine as a competitor. And um, I don't want him to change <laughs> as a person, but I think the evolution of uh, taking his craft a little bit more serious in terms of conditioning, in terms of arm, I think he's highly motivated, went out and had a great summer, had a good fall, and uh, I think he's somebody that showed last year you can trust to throw strikes, um, change speeds, and I think uh, he'll have more opportunities to do that this year. Generally speaking, do you feel comfortable playing freshman? Well, I, I subscribe to the Alabama football philosophy where the best guy is going to play, and we're trying to create a highly competitive uh, environment. And by all means, if we have a Tua Tagalovilla or however you say his name uh, <laughs> ready to go, then they're going to play. With that being said, baseball is really experiential, and um, it, it takes time. I mean, I, I mentioned a couple of the freshmen earlier that there are some very loud and live tools where you might line them up against a guy that might start opening day and go like, there's not this younger player looks the part 
a little bit better, but it's hard to replace, you know, 500 at bats of, of college baseball and, and being on the bases and being on defense. And so that's why they go out to summer ball, you know, before they get here and they go out in summer ball every year to try to close the gap on that experience. And some do it quicker than others. And with that being said, um, you know, I'd love to play freshman, but you know, it's the University of Arizona. We're going to play the best player that gives us the best chance on that day. And if there's opportunities to get guys in and develop them, we will, but we'll never sacrifice that for the good of the team at that day. What did that say about Nick getting a call so early? Well, I think he, he mentally, like I said, uh, makeup wise, ready, uh, prepared, uh, eats, sleeps, drinks, baseball. You know, some. Some guys, you have to worry about them playing video games all night at 18 to 21 year old males. Some guys you have to worry about off the field decision making. That's one I'm not too concerned that um, when he wakes up, the first thing on his mind is how do I become a better player today? The last thing on his mind when he goes to bed is what do I need to do tomorrow to be a better player? And you want to fill your baseball organization with those types of people. And, and he has that. Doesn't mean it's always going to be easy because the game is hard and, you know, you need experience too. But I think it just says something about the mental discipline and where the player places priorities in his life. And he's at the, at the top of that, you know. And um, I want more guys like that. You know, I, I have no problem saying we need more guys on our team to be like that. And, um, you know, that's one of those – it is what it is kind of things, but, you know, it's credit to him. And we have other guys on our team like that, but he, he, he sets the bar in that regard. Coach, real quick, we have Meet the Team Friday night. Last year we almost had like 2,000 people yeah. out there. How much did that help the newcomers and what yeah. kind of impact does that have? Great question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> do you used to be a sports writer or something? <laughs> um, <laughs> um, that's a big deal uh, for us. Um, first off, I think we have a very special engagement with our program and the fans in, in this community. Um, they are spectacular. I don't think in, there's another environment in the West like uh, Arizona baseball has in, in Tucson. And, um, you know, first off and most importantly, it's just a way to thank them, sign some autographs, they get to meet the players. And that's the most important part of it. But competitively, what we try to do is, is simulate what Friday night's going to look like, you know, from the time they show up at the field to the first pitch and, you know, get the smell of popcorn out there and, and butts in the seats and the announcer and those types of things is, is a big deal. And, you know, we started out 10-0 and last year, and I feel like we were ready for the first game, and I feel like that was part of our, our process of getting ready. What does it mean to have uh, the Baseball Writers Association released the top 35? You guys ranked 30th. How much stock do you put in those preseason rankings? And what kind of motivation does it give you guys to see yourself just outside of that top 25? Well, to me, it means zero. I think, well, it means there's one thing that it's good for is your name is in front of younger players as, you know, one of the top programs in the country. Um, as far as the immediate team, we'll never validate ourselves on rankings or even our record, which might sound a little bit crazy. We're going to validate ourselves on being awesome at preparing and the attitude, concentration, and effort in how we play. And with that, the results take care of themselves. For them, they might go like, well, hey, you know what? There's some good players on our team that have accomplished a lot, and maybe we're down here. If that fuels their desire, great. Is it going to win us a game? Probably not. And so it, uh, it's something we don't, I don't spend a lot of time thinking about other than uh, it can help you continue to push and, and promote your program as far as 2018 you know <laughs> I don't know that we don't win a game on Twitter you know as much as everybody loves Twitter you know we don't win a game on you know baseball America or d1baseball.com you win it on the field in terms of how you play and so if it motivates them to to get climbing on that awesome I'm all for it <laughs> anything else for coach all right. All right.